Hey guys, Bob from RetroRGB.com here. I want to do a quick video on how to patch ROMs for use in ROM carts or on emulators. In my weekly podcast, I talk a lot about different ROM patches that are out that either offer different enhancements or are complete hacks of the game, um, you know, homebrew reimaginings of an original game. And the only ways to actually play them are to find pre-patched versions or to actually go and patch them yourself. Now, a lot of the things I talk about are already available in a ROM set called the Smoke Monster ROM set. And generally speaking, if you're looking for something that's not there, it'll probably be in his next revision of them. But learning how to patch yourself is really a worthy skill, because it's very often that you might want to combine patches or make your own custom patch, or use some of the randomizers that are available that allow you to completely change some of the classic games that are out. So this is just going to be a quick how-to video. Um, I'm going to do it on a Windows PC because I think most, most of these tools are available on Windows but not on other platforms. And I'll just walk you through it. Uh, the one thing to remember as well is I'm really not sure what the, the legal ramifications of telling people about ROMs are. I was told that uh, by a lawyer if... As long as I don't sell them, I'm not going to get in any trouble, but I don't, I just don't want to take that chance. So the first thing you need to know before I even get to the how-to is in order to find ROMs, just Google it. So if you're looking for Super Mario Brothers Nintendo, just type out Super Mario Brothers NES ROM, and generally speaking, within the first three links, you'll find it. Same for the Smoke Monster ROM set. Just do a little bit of Googling, and you should be able to find all that. Um, so yeah, other than that, let's get started and I'll show you all the tools that you need. So let's get started. First, you'll need some kind of zip tool. Now most OS's already come with a zip tool, but if you happen to need one, 7-zip is completely free and perfect, so you really wouldn't need to worry about anything else with it. Next, you'll need the main tool that you're going to use for the actual patching. It's called Lunar IPS, or abbreviated LIPS. And once again, completely free. And this is what you're going to use on 99% of the actual modding that you're going to be doing. So I'm just going to download this. And then you're going to need the, uh, the actual ROM patch itself. So the website romhacking.net is just an amazing treasure trove of these ROM patches. And it has everything you could imagine in here. Um, it has things from like fan remakes of games with slight improvements and different enhancements all the way up to like major complete redoing of the games and then even just things like color restorations so um, i would definitely recommend going through this site and finding anything that you need because i'm willing to bet that you'd find at least a handful of stuff that would interest you but for this demonstration i'm going to use a same type of patch from a different website i just wanted to show off nest.goondocks.se because all of these patches here are done by one person and he really specialized in taking the Nintendo arcade games, the Versus systems, and patching them to work on real hardware, which was just a huge accomplishment that no one had really done perfectly up until this point. So I'm just going to start with the, his latest game, Super Popeye. And uh, this is basically just like a, uh, like a Donkey Kong style game that he allows other enhancements in it. So he's got this little, uh, his little reminder, um, it's a patches result of hard work. Please consider supporting if you like it. I already did. Um, and I'm just going to download that as well. And that's pretty much all we'll need. So we have the two files here and I'm just going to unzip both of these. That's where the zipping tool comes in. And I'm also going to grab both an emulator and the original ROM. So, you know, let's just, I already own Popeye, so this is totally legal, but acquire these however you will. Um, although emulators are totally legal, just Google whichever one. This is FCE Ultra. And one trick that I always like to do is I make a copy of the ROM that I'm messing with just in case I screw something up. And then I rename it whatever the patch is. That way, it's very easy to differentiate between the two. I know it's a bit of an OCD move, but it really helps me. 
So as you can see, we have the renamed ROM with its original date of 2002. And then we're just going to go into Lunar IPS and run it. And all you have to do is apply the patch. And then since we're right in the downloads directory, just select the patch that you just downloaded. And then select the file to patch. So I'm going to do the new file that we copied and renamed. And that's it. The whole process is done. So to verify that this worked properly, all you need to do is fire up your emulator. And I'm just going to select Super Popeye. And if you notice, uh, the date on this is the newer date today as opposed to 2002. So you know the patch went through correctly. And let's test the patch. So as the game's booting, um, the patch that this guy did allowed you to actually move Bluto, or I guess, you know, Donkey Kong, depending on, uh, so as you could, you could see the different directions and he'll be able to, to move back and forth, which is kind of neat. Um, you know, not really, uh, the world's greatest patch, but something that I never even thought was possible. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it really is that easy. You just download, uh, the ROM, download the patch, and then run the patch tool and that's it. But there's one more type of patch I'd like to show just cause it's a little bit confusing and I'd like to show it before I demonstrate real hardware. The next tool I wanna to demonstrate is a little bit different but the same basic process where you just download a ROM, download the patch and go from there. But this is actually a very fun program called a Zelda randomizer. So this actually takes the original Legend of Zelda game and allows you to make a whole bunch of stuff on it random. Uh, they also have one for Super Metroid with a bunch of pretty cool stuff, as well as a link to the past. So all of these things are awesome and just open up a world of different fun. But I'm just going to start and really only show the Zelda one just because it's, you know, we're already doing NES games. So you have to just download it. Oh, download an installation. Dropbox download. And of course, you always have to deal with these, you know, download programs. No thanks. Save file. There you go. So now I'm just going to go back to my downloads directory. And unlike Lunar IPS, you actually have to install this one. It doesn't just run right from the folder, which, you know, not too big a deal. But we're done. Just run it. And as you can see here, I already have uh, a copy of Legend of Zelda, as well as I still have the emulator ready. And all you need to do is just go in and choose the ROM. Now, there's a bunch of very cool features that I could spend a long time going through. But basically, you just all you need to worry about is shuffling through these tabs here to get the exact different changes that you want made. So things like shuffling the shop items, dungeon items, um, you could uh, allow many different cheats and hacks to have, shuffle the overworld monsters, that's crazy because you can get those little guys with the swords right in the first screen, and um, you know, basically pretty much anything else you could think of. Starting tunic color, <laughs> color. Just, just do blue, um, you know, start which quest is which, random quest, uh, and there's also all of these preset options and if you hit random, um, almost everything turns black, which means you don't know if it's going to be randomized or not, which is kind of cool. But basically, just go through and choose all of your options and then hit generate. And then you see that the output file is there, and that's it. And this one's easy. You don't need to copy or any of that stuff because it's pretty obvious which one is which. So let's just open up FCE Ultra and just compare and see the two. So we have the original Legend of Zelda, the date of 96, and it's pretty obvious which is which. So as you can see, it's totally just the Legend of Zelda. Everything looks normal just as it's supposed to be, and no surprises here. So let's open up the randomized one. And once again, really easy to know which is which because it's got that big long name. So when you start it up, it automatically tells you which of the parameters are changed uh, and that it's been randomized. 
and just register here. So everything's changed already. You could see that the color of link is completely different. Um, I'm not sure if it randomized caves. Yep. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of neat. You could choose the uh, sword or just having the candle. And then as you see, well, those are the same, but if it randomized the enemies, you could find just different random enemies in different places. So that's basically it. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty easy once you get used to it. The hardest thing will be deciding which of the randomizations that you want to actually use. But playing on emulators isn't my thing. Anybody that watches my channel knows that uh, I, I just can't stand the lag and the fact that it doesn't feel like an original experience. So let's play on some real hardware. Now, in order to use these things on real hardware, you'll need something called a ROM cart. They're available for almost any system, and I have a whole page on my website dedicated to them, as well as reviewing which one's best and which are the preferred to use. But as you can see, they're pretty much available for every system out there. So um, the one that I'm going to use is for the Famicom, but they make a Nintendo version, and they're pretty much all the same thing. The best ones out there are the ones that just run off of an SD or a micro SD card. And there is no real installation, which is my favorite part. Anybody that's used some of the Game Boy games from back in the day, um, really, or the Game Boy Advance ones, remember how much of a pain it was to patch. So I'm just going to create a directory called patch, because uh, and we'll stick all of our patches in here. And then take the ones, copy them in, and that's it. That's as far as the installation goes, so it's pretty cool. So that's it. Now I'm just going to insert this in and show real hardware. So now we're just going to take the ROM cart, insert it right into the Famicom. And here we go. Now you can see the directory patch that we just created. And let's play the Legend of Zelda, the original. So the Zelda that we know, all the colors are the same. and everything's as it's supposed to be. But let's just go back and check out the patched version. And as you can see, just like you saw before, there's all the writing. There you go, different colored link. And there you have it. You have all of those crazy ROMs running on real hardware. And this is by far the best way to experience these games. Original hardware, original controllers, and if you could ever find them on an RGB monitor. Um, these things just change the way that you play old games. It's just amazing and I highly recommend it. But if you're interested in any of that stuff, definitely just check out my channel and uh, much more information on how to do all of these things. So that's pretty much it. Find your ROM via Google, make sure you have a zip utility, then download whatever patch utility needed, most likely Lunar IPS, but some of these have their own EXEs. Then just patch the original file and go. One thing you might wanna note is that not all ROMs will be playable on real hardware. Some are too big for ROM carts or for even the original consoles, but generally speaking, I've had great luck with those. There's just been a few where uh, things weren't compatible in certain scenarios. Also, there is other patches that are a little more complicated, like the MSU audio stuff for the Super Nintendo SD to SNES, but that's getting into other complicated stuff. And to be honest, once you patch the utility like this, everything else is really its own individual situation, and you just kind of have to deal with it as they come. But hopefully this was a good beginner guide to get anybody started that, uh, that just needed to get their foot wet in this stuff. Um, if you're into things like RGB monitors or really trying to get the best uh, quality out of your old consoles, please check out my site, RetroRGB.com. Uh, and if you like what you see, please support the Patreon because there's no way I would be able to do any of this stuff without my Patreon supporters. So as always, any comments or criticism, please post down below. I love to hear from you guys and I'll see you next time. Thank you.